Hey guys, we're back with my buddy Craig and we're gonna talk about the two next things you really need to think about with your fruit trees after you have pruned. We're gonna talk about fertilizing. So what do you fertilize with and when do you fertilize? And we're gonna talk about spraying your trees. What do you spray? When do you spray? How do you spray? Everything you need to know. Today we're really talking about stone fruit, which is different than citrus. We'll do a whole nother video on that. But before I get into it, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified anytime we put out a video. So, okay, we get this beautiful stone fruit that you pruned mm -hmm. in the previous video check it out guys we did all the detail it looks amazing now that's you know one part of having really healthy fruit trees the next part is you got to feed them and I know like I know how to how to fertilize our vegetable farm and our seed farm but it gets a little confusing with fruit trees what do you feed them with and when Okay, well for stone fruit, and as you mentioned, it's gonna be a little different for citrus trees, but for stone fruit trees, first and foremost, we don't fertilize when they're dormant. We wait until okay. they're actually active because right now the tree is not able to take up any nutrients. So you could put down as much fertilizer as you want. All you're doing is adding it to the soil. The tree's not doing anything with it. And you run the risk of over fertilizing your tree. And with our rains here, you could, you could, that could get washed off, right? So you might be wasting product. Correct. Okay. Um, 100% that's happening. Uh, now you also need to be aware of your own particular trees because your tree might flower at a different stage than my tree, even okay. though it might be the same variety. Ours is of actually tree. flowering right now. <laughs> yeah. So if you were seeing flowers, start fertilizing because okay. that means the tree is waking up. Okay. If it's waking up and we're still getting rains, even better because now okay. we're actually pushing some of that fertilizer down. But before we even talk more about fertilizer, we need to talk about we're not actually feeding the tree, we are feeding the soil. If we don't feed the soil, there is no, there's no way for the nutrients to be broken down to a level where the tree can then take it up through the roots. So the first thing we're gonna start with is compost. Compost is the most important aspect to feeding your soil because compost contains all the organic matter, the natural fungus and bacteria that you need in the soil that are actually gonna feed on that organic matter which then are going to break down the nutrients to a level where the tree roots can actually take it up. So we need to feed that natural biome in the soil first. Okay. Fertilizer is secondary. Okay. We have to have compost and mulch because the mulch is going to help you not only trap water. You guys but know I love mulch. <laughs> well, the mulch is also going to keep the composting pro pro uh, process going. What we really want is the trickle effect. We want the tree to just kind of always be getting a little bit of Pulling compost stuff from the pantry when the you time. need it. Exactly. Okay. So by putting compost down and putting mulch over that, we're creating both of those scenarios. We're giving it a good dose of organic matter, but we're also allowing it to continue that process when we're not around. Okay. Now how, so like with a tree like this, very large tree, are, are you just sticking on top? What are you doing with the compost? So are you in mixing this, it in? In this case, it's always best to pull the bark back. Okay. So that you can expose the, you can co the see compost. pulled all this back here. So we just want to clear it away from the tree. This is a good, good layer of mulch. And just while we're down here, one thing to make sure you're doing on a regular basis is pulling this mulch back away from the trunk of your tree. Um, this isn't fertilizing related, but you can end up accidentally rotting your trunk here if this stays wet too high on the tree. So we want to pull this back regularly anyway. Once we get this all pulled back, we'll go ahead and spread our compost about an inch to two inches thick around the base of the tree. We would like to get it out as far as the drip line, uh, but for the sake of time, we're just going to do a demonstration here. But if we could actually get this bark beep, pulled all the way beep, back beep. to here, then we could go ahead and spread our, spread our compost. We're just going to toss some of this down here. Look right, how beautiful that is. That's some good looking compost. So we're just going to spread this out. Again, keep it off the trunk of the tree as much as you can. Now, obviously you can't like, like, like uh, mechanically mix this in too much because you're going to disrupt the roots. Yeah, we don't want to dig down into the soil. All we're doing is adding new nutrients on top. And then we're just going to go ahead and cover this all back up so that the compost can continue to do its thing. Now, in this case, this compost is nice and damp, which is what we want. Oftentimes compost can be quite dry. So before we put the mulch back, we wanna go ahead and make sure we water this as much as we can uh, without washing it away. Perfect, yeah, because compost, really dry compost can be hydrophobic. You guys know what that means. It doesn't wanna hold on to water, so you wanna pre-water it as best you can. What do you feed it? How do you feed it? Like grow power is a big one that you hear about all the time. What grow do you power. use? Um, grow power is great. I love grow power. Um, the reality is that Almost any of the major brands of organic fertilizer are all essentially the same formula. Because they're gonna have the microbiology, they're also gonna have all of the nutrients that you need, and they're gonna be a diverse product. It's not gonna be one ingredient, Correct. right? Uh, we, don't, we don't use any fertilizers that are only one ingredient, unless we're talking about compost. Okay. 
um, which is a lot of ingredients. Yes. Uh, when it comes to fertilizer, you, the big, biggest thing is using an organic fertilizer and using a fertilizer that is maybe more specific for your trees. So in the case of stone fruit, any broad spectrum organic fertilizer will do. But there are fertilizers out there that, that are specifically formulated for like citrus and avocados. Okay. So you can take a look at that. Now, how would you do it? Well, first I always ask myself if I need it. Okay. Because if you have really, really, really healthy soil and you were putting regular compost down and you were keeping a good thick layer of bark, you may not actually ever need fertilizer. Okay. Now, when I use fertilizers, if the tree is struggling um, or if the tree, if I'm trying to get the tree to grow. Okay. So if I really want to, you got to think of fertilizer as kind of like steroids for your plants. Okay. Um, it, the, obviously, trees have survived long before we had fertilizers because the nature nature did it. So yes. what we're trying to do with compost is create natural fertilizer. But in the event that we do need some fertilizer, or you have really bad soil, and Most you're, you're in just Southern California, and it takes time to really build that soil up years. So in the meantime, you are going to need to use some fertilizers just to supplement. When we fertilize is when the tree is growing. So in the case of stone fruit. The trees are dormant, we're not fertilizing. Here in Southern California, we kind of get away with murder when it comes to trees because our trees almost don't go dormant. Yep. We don't get real winter here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we know that even though most of the country, our stone fruits aren't gonna start flowering until probably April. Yeah. As you mentioned before, we're at the beginning of February and, and trees are already trees starting are to blooming. pop. Yep. So since they're starting to pop, we know we're probably pretty safe. So for those of you at home, like a little cheat thing is if your tree wakes up, it's hungry. Yep. Feed it. Just Pretty like simple. you in the morning. Right? Yes. I need my breakfast for sure. <laughs> so in this case, we're going to look at the directions on the back of the fertilizer because even though they're all basically made of the same things, they're all slightly different formulas. So they may have a difference in what this brand recommends versus another brand. Okay. So in this case, this recommends for a tree this size. We just want to look on the back here. Uh, a tree this size is one cup uh, spread around the drip line of the tree. Now, this is a big mistake that people make. They want to put the fertilizer down right next to the trunk. And that's not the best because that part of the trunk and the roots there aren't doing much of the absorption. Your roots at this point are out to the drip line, which is the edge of the tree branches. So your roots are out at least out to here. So your roots that are actually doing most of the absorption of water and nutrients are actually going to be further out away from the trunk. So when we spread our fertilizer, and I'll use a handful of compost just as an example, is we want to come around outside out here and spread our fertilizer as evenly as we can around the drip line of the tree. After that, we'll go ahead and water it in. Water it in, so that way it stays in place, goes in. So we've obviously had some heavy rains lately. You would want to fertilize in between those heavy rains because you don't want to. You don't want to just waste money and have that and have that washed off. Correct. Really light rains are perfect because exactly. it really pushes it in. Exactly. We don't want to fertilize right before a heavy rain because most likely it's not going to stick around. So million dollar question: You fertilize when they wake up, and then what about throughout the year? Are you fertilizing again? So throughout the year, there's a there's a you can do it a lot of different ways. This brand specifically says three to four times a year. I actually like to take the number that I need for the entire year and divide it by 12 or by six, depending on my trees. So if we're talking about dormant trees, I'll divide the number by six. So this would say I need one cup uh, three to four times a year. Let's say four times a year. So that's okay. four cups. So what we're going to do is we're going to take four cups and we're going to apply those four cups during the six months or so that the tree is actually is active. active. And okay. it, please measure. Okay. Because it's very easy to do two cups or one cup and not know the difference if we're just tossing it out with okay. our hands. So you want to use something that you know is about a cup. Uh, we, I would just take something like my trowel, scoop it, throw it in a measuring cup, see how much it is. Then I know when I look at my trowel how much what I need. What it is. Okay. We don't need to be super precise, but we don't want to over fertilize. Because you don't want to waste can... money, waste product. Also, you don't want to kill your tree. Yeah. Uh, one of the big problems that people have is when they over fertilize, you get uh, too much phosphorus in the soil. And phosphorus can become very toxic to trees very quickly. Um, I've seen full grown big lime trees die over six months because of over fertilizing. Wow. Now the other thing that I always get confused about and I think growers do is um, I know that you were supposed to spray our trees, particularly with stone fruit. We want to do a dormant spray, a suffocant, which is basically an oil that like attacks or well, I shouldn't say attacks. It suffocates the scale and the mealy bug that we get really bad here because we don't get a lot of hard rainfall. Correct. When do you spray that? Well, before we talk about spraying, let's talk about being aware. Because when it comes to spraying, you have to be aware of your environment. Same with, you know, with fertilizing. You have to be aware of what's going on with your soil. So we want to make sure first that we don't have any rain coming in the next three to four days. Okay. Obviously. Uh, we also want to make sure that we're not doing this in the midday sun. Anytime because you're... it's an oil. It's like putting on baby oil. Yes, correct. Okay. And we don't want to burn our trees. Uh, here in Southern California, we get pretty intense sun even in the wintertime. Yep. So we want to make sure that we don't do that. So I like to find, I find it best to do late morning. Uh, just because we, the, the dew has had time to dry and we're only spraying dormant trees. 
So there's a couple things about these trees is that when they're in the winter time, this is when all the larva and the eggs that the bugs have laid on the tree are, are growing um, so they can hatch in the spring. So we want to make sure and use that horticultural oil, which as you mentioned is a sustainable so, kind of- So horticultural oil is dormant spray? It's one of two. Okay. There are two. So we're going to talk about, we're going to spray for bugs and we're going to spray for fungus. Okay. So horticultural oil is your suffocant. Okay. That's what you're going to put on your tree that's going to suffocate any living thing that's on the tree. You want to get three applications in and you want to make sure you have at least four to five days in between those applications. Okay. In between those applications, we are going to also apply copper fungicide. Okay. Copper fungicide, especially here in Southern California, is really important because peach leaf curl the fungus that causes leaf curl runs like wildfire through here. Yes. In the last couple of years, it's been really bad. So I've been advising my clients to if you get in your three of horticultural oil, but if you can get in five applications of your copper fungicide, it's only going to be better for you. Okay. So we're going to make sure we start spraying. You can start spraying even before you prune. You want to start spraying as soon as the tree starts to lose its leaves because we have a short winter or a short winter here. Yep. So it's very easy if we need five weeks to spray those five weeks might be the only five weeks you yep, get. Yep. So as soon as the tree starts to yellow and all the leaves are starting to fall off and we can shake the branches and make all the leaves come down, okay. go ahead and start spraying. Okay. Um, and make sure you get in there and soak your tree down to the point where you can see it's actually dripping. Dripping. Don't be shy with it. Okay. Make sure we get in all our applications before you see any flowers. You cannot spray your flowers. If okay. you spray your flowers, it will kill your flowers. They will fall off. No fruit. No fruit. Okay. Okay, and I know for us every year, it's always like a race against the clock. You think you have more time. And it's very difficult to get in those sprays. But when our orchard was almost dying, that was one of the things that helped bring it back was getting control of the mealybugs and the, and the spider mites and all of the things that had been living on in the orchard for years unchecked, basically. Yep, and that's you bring it to a good point. The easiest way to avoid really, we're always going to use the sprays because we're always going to be proactive, but yeah. the best way to be proactive is to wash your trees throughout the year on a regular basis and be really diligent about it. And you mean just like a hard jet of water. Exactly. Now, okay. obviously you don't want to do that when it's flowering. Yep. You don't want to knock off all your flowers. Or baby fruits. Or, or baby fruits, but actually with the baby fruits, a lot of them are going to fall off yeah, anyway. Okay. Maybe be a little more gentle with the water, but what we're yeah. trying to replicate is rain. Yeah. We don't, we get nine months a year that we don't no really way. don't get any rain and so what's happening is that the leaves are starting to collect dust and dirt and they can't respirate anymore okay which and then you start a cascading kind of domino effect where the trees are starting to stress because they're they can't breathe so once they start to stress they become vulnerable then the bugs can move in the yep. aphids the scale the mealy bug the white fly yep. uh, spider mites you know, all, all now now the tree is more susceptible to that it's kind of like your immune system you know if you just keep getting sick it's gonna be easier and easier to get sick. Yep, yep. Whereas with the tree, if we just keep it nice and clean, most of the trees, as long as they have all of their resources, their fertilizer, their food, their compost, water, they know how to deal with most of these bugs on their own. It's okay. when we don't pay attention to mother nature, what mother nature is or isn't doing, that we start to run into problems. So just in quick review, so we're gonna spray three times a year? Three times for in our the winter. In the winter for our horticultural oil, and then in between those times, we're gonna do our copper fungicide. Correct. So remember kids, we're really talking about Southern California zone nine and 10, very specific to the issues that we have here. If you're in upstate New York or Wyoming, it might be slightly different, but these are the things that we've done to have very successful orchards in our area. And Craig has grown and helped a lot of people have beautiful orchards. So take his advice, it's totally worth it. Thank you.